Okay, so let's start. Um, we are going to talk about the electroscope, and we want to model the electroscope. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what happened? Let me just remind you again. We had our electroscope. We charged the cup. When the cup was charged, we brought it close to the electroscope, and the needle was attracted towards the cup. Everyone happy with that? Good. So I charge the cup up positive. Unlike charges attract, the needle gets attracted, so the needle must be negative. Is that right? Is the needle negative? No. There's polarization. Very good. So we polarize the needle of the electroscope. So what we're going to do today is model the electroscope and I want you guys to do most of the talking, okay? I'll just have the chalk, draw on the blackboard, I want you guys to talk, okay? Good. Um, so let's start. This represents our cup. Uh, let's imagine that our cup is positively charged. Actually, we don't know whether our cup is positively charged or not. We're just going to assume it's positively charged. For this calculation, it won't matter if the cup is positively charged or negatively charged. So, let's make the cup positively charged. Sitting here, we will have our needle. The needle is made out of tin, and tin is a conductor. So what will happen when this tin needle is exposed to that cup? Polarizes. So can you tell me how to indicate that here? What will happen? Good. So this side of the needle will become negative. And this side of the needle will become positive. Good. Let's put some uh, symbols on. Let's say that the charge on the cup maybe is Q. Let's say that the charge here is minus Q and the charge here is plus Q. Can you guys please tell me some things that we know about the system that we can use to start calculating the charge on the cup and the charge on the needle. Any suggestions? So the cup we can model as a point charge, for what purpose? When will we model the cup as a point charge? When we're far from the cup. So when we want to think about the field that is inside the needle, we will model the cup as a point charge. Good. What else can you tell me? Ah, so model the needle as an infinitely charged sheet. When will we model the needle as an infinitely charged sheet? When we're interested in calculating the field inside the needle. Why? Because when we're talking about inside the needle, the two faces which are charged is, is this face and that face, right? When we're inside the needle, we are very close to the two faces because the needle is so thin. And we said whenever we're close to a charged sheet, very close to it, we can model it as an infinite charge sheet. Good. So in fact, the field inside the needle will pick up two contributions. So for field inside the needle, we will model the cup as a point charge 
and we will model the needle as two infinitely charged sheets. Here is an infinitely charged sheet, here is an infinitely charged sheet. So, so this is from Q and use infinite charged sheet for charge little q. What else can you tell me about the field inside the needle? Good. So inside the needle, the field due to these charges will be in that direction, right? Whereas the field due to the cup will be in that direction. And we know that at equilibrium, the field inside a conductor is zero. So at equilibrium, E inside the needle vanishes. Good. This is one of the ideas that we are going to use. So we'll develop that further. What is the other idea that we will use? When our needle is deflected, so when our needle hangs at some angle, what forces are acting on it? Gravity? Electric? Tension. Tension. The force from the support on the needle, right? And at equilibrium, what can you tell me about those forces? They must sum to? Zero. Zero. And we can estimate the gravitational force. So that's going to allow us to estimate how big is the electric force. So. The other thing that we will do is we will say um, at equilibrium the sum of the forces acting on uh, the needle is equal to zero. That's the second idea that we will use. And because the gravitational force acts, we're going to be able to actually start estimating the size of some of the other forces because we can estimate the size of gravity. Good. So let's try to implement this first idea. So first of all, let's think about the needle. For a field like this, which way do the, does the electric field point? Towards the needle or away from the needle? Away. away. Good. Can somebody tell me what is the magnitude of the electric field? Sigma, surface charge density. 1 over epsilon 0, 1 over 2. 1 over epsilon 0 for the medium, 1 over 2 because there's two directions for the field to go. And what is sigma in terms of Q? Q over A. Q over A. Good. So sigma is equal to Q over A. And Oh, sorry, let me use little q to match with what we're calling the charge of the needle. So it will be little q over A. And A is the area of the face of the needle. Good. Now let's uh, think about the second face of the needle, the one that is negatively charged.
Which way are the field lines now? Towards the needle or away from the needle? Towards. What is the field over here? 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 Good. Sigma over epsilon naught. Here, E is 0. And here, E is 0. So that's the field from the needle. Um, good. Now, over here, we have the cup. And uh, the cup has a charge Q. And this charge of the cup is producing a force inside the needle too. Uh, uh, producing an electric field inside the needle too. In which direction is the electric field? Towards the cup? The electric field lines? Who agrees with that? <laughs> to come, are you giving me a test? <laughs> so let's think, okay? Let's try to figure out what is the direction of the electric field with a positive charge, okay? So, if I put a positive charge here, do we agree that they repel? So do we agree that's how the force would be? And do we agree that this is Q times the electric field? And this charge is positive. So does everybody agree the electric field will point this way? Okay. Good. So does the electric field point towards or away from the cup? Perfect. What strength is this electric field? Okay, it will have to be sigma over epsilon naught, good. Now can you tell it to me based on the charge of the cup? Q. Or pi? Epsilon naught. R? Squared. Good. What is R? This is between the cup and the needle. Good. So. That. Will be R. Everyone happy? Good. So let's summarize this first equation. And uh, it came from this idea. I'm going to put it inside that region of the blackboard. So we have um, Q over A times by 1 over epsilon naught. That is sigma over epsilon naught. A is equal to the area of the face of the <coughs> And this must be equal to Q over <coughs> 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. And r is this distance from the cup to the needle. So this is the first equation that we've got. And it relates the charge that's collected on the face of the needle to the charge that is on the cup. Good. Now, 
let's now think about what's happening when the needle is at equilibrium and uh, we'll sum the forces to zero. Um, good. When we sum the force acting on the needle to zero, so I want the force of the needle on the cup. So force of needle on the cup. Why do I want the force of the needle on the cup? Because this is equal to, so the magnitude, you know, now look at the magnitude. This is equal to the magnitude of the force of the cup on the needle. So I want to eventually look at all of the forces acting on the needle, but to get the size of this force, it's easier to work out what's the force that the needle exerts on the cup. So to work out the force that the needle exerts on the cup, what should I do? Sorry? The deflection of the needle. Because we need to show the condition of equilibrium. So the deflection of the needle will definitely play a role. But if I want to work out what is the force of the needle on the cup? What do I have to do? I have to take... So, 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 so that's the condition for equilibrium. But I'm not saying what's the condition for equilibrium. I'm saying what is the force of the needle on the cup? Charge of the needle, charge of the cup multiplied by the field set up by the needle. Very good. So this force will be the charge of the cup times by the electric field set up by the needle. How am I going to model the needle? As an infinitely charged sheet? So if we think about it as an infinitely charged sheet, at what point does the needle start deflecting? Somewhere there. Is that very, very close to the needle? No. So I would say an infinitely charged sheet approximation is bad. You know, the distance that we are from the needle is much bigger than the width of the needle. So we won't model the needle as an infinitely charged sheet. How will we model it? So it's not one point charge, it's a pair of point charges. There's a plus and a minus. So we should model this as a dipole. So now we will model the needle as a dipole. Everyone happy? So for this calculation, we model the needle as an infinitely charged sheet. But that approximation gave us the right value for the electric field inside the needle. If we want to work out the electric field some distance from the needle, then we should model the needle as a dipole. And that will give us the right value for the electric field some distance from the dipole. They are different questions. What is the electric field here? and what is the electric field inside the tin. Okay? So, um, for this calculation, we model the needle as a dipole. Okay? And uh, to do that, we're going to have two charges, and those <coughs> charges are separated by some distance. What distance are they separated by? the thickness T of the needle. Okay? So let's call T is the thickness of the needle. Okay. So let's write down what this force is. So, um, we're now going to work out the force of the needle on the cup. That's what we're calculating, but this is equal to the force of the cup on the needle.
that is equal to Q. Now, we calculated the electric field from a dipole if you're on the axis of the dipole. Can someone tell me what was the electric field? So the safe thing to say when I ask you a question, you can say over 4 pi epsilon naught. <laughs> right? Okay. But I said it, so now you guys have to say something else. R cubed. Are we sure it's R cubed? I thought the field falls off like R squared. Why is it R cubed? Hamid, it looks like you want to say something. <laughs> because the uh, way we calculate the, the points, it is not cancelling each other. Uh, Good. Side, but We've got a plus charge and a minus charge. And they try to cancel. Yeah. They don't manage to cancel perfectly, but the 1 over r squared becomes a 1 over r cubed. Good. And then? Electric dipole moment P, good. And there's also a factor of 2. Okay? All good physicists get the factors of 2 wrong. And no one told me there was a 2. So you guys must be good. There's the 2. What is the P? What is P? The electric dipole moment? So the magnitude of that should be Q times by T. Good. QT. And now we can immediately look at our equation at the top there and we've got a formula for little q. Okay? So I'm going to plug that in. So let's uh, make that q. So this is equal to q. 2t over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed. And now I'm going to read little q of that formula. So we have got a q over 4 pi r squared. So let's uh, simplify that a little bit. Oh. Q squared to a t q squared over four pi epsilon naught uh, times by another four pi times by r to the five. Have you seen one over r to the five before? Remember when we calculated the force between a point charge and a neutral atom? We found 1 over r to the 5. And that 1 over r to the 5 came because the field of a dipole falls off like r cubed, but the electric dipole moment falls off like 1 over r squared. So the total fall off is 1 over r to the 5. Okay? Good. Um, why does it depend on Q squared? If the cup had been negatively charged, we would still have got an attractive force. Okay? So that's why things depend on Q squared. Good. Um, very good. So that's the force of the cup on the needle. So let's maybe summarize that force. Force of a cup on the needle is
Buyur. So now that we've calculated the force of the cup and the needle, we can now estimate what is the force due to gravity. So we can now see what do we get when we sum the forces to zero. So let's do that. Here is the needle, there is some angle theta, and what I would like you guys to do now on a piece of paper is draw the free body diagram, fill in all of the forces, and tell me what equations follow from that free body diagram. So try that now.